Perhaps we could just define what 1x is, is first. What does it mean to be a regular software development organization? Well, for a lot of our clients and most of the industry, it just means we actually ship software. Yeah, it takes a long time. Yes, it costs a lot of money, but we ship and we actually make revenue from it. Perhaps level two or 2x software says, not only do we ship, but we actually do it pretty close to schedule or the budget that we decided upon. That would be amazing for a lot of organizations. Maybe 5x says, yeah, we're on time and on budget, and the customers are actually happy with the software. That would even be better, wouldn't it? And maybe 7x says, yes, the customers are happy, we met our budget, and the team is actually looking forward to working on the next release of the product. That would be really good. So 10x then, when we put it all together, 10 means we have all those components that yes, we're on time, we're on budget, desired functionality, desired quality level, the team's happy, but we're doing it at a shorter time and a lower budget. That's what it means to be 10x. So one of the things we really wanna look at here is the use of comprehensive evidence or data sources. Now, when I did my research for this class, I was looking for what are the best practices we have about consulting a wide range of evidence. And frankly, there wasn't a lot out there. And so I broadened my field from software a little bit and said, what other disciplines are like software in that we have someone who's really smart and we tend to support that really smart person in making that decision. And what I found was in the world, I found an analogy I think is pretty applicable in the world of emergency room services. Because how do decisions get made in an emergency room? Well, a patient's brought in, it's gone through a triage process, then it finally comes to the expert, the doctor and the doctor examining what evidence has been put in front of them, usually their own observations, their experience, makes a diagnosis, recommends a treatment, and then leaves. Isn't that a lot like software? We bring it in, we do some planning work, we bring it to that technical lead, that architect, that software development expert, and says, what should we do? They make the decisions, and then we go off and implement them. And like emergency rooms, the outcomes were pretty mixed. In fact, they're actually not that great. And so the emergency room said, what can we do to change this? And they came up with a process called evidence-based decision-making. And evidence-based decision-making basically said, in addition to the evidence the doctor sees, let's provide that doctor, that decision-maker, with more evidence. So, it's just, so instead of just relying on their own observations, the doctor now turned to the nurse and said, nurse, what do you think is wrong with this person? And what do you think we should do? To hear their story. If the family members are present or other uh, close associates, they say, what do you think is wrong and what do you think we should do? And if the patient's able, asking the patient what they think is wrong, what they should do. And since they're gathering evidence, not only their observations, but also their ideas of what might be wrong, so they get more broader input. And what they found in those emergency room situations is that patient outcomes dramatically improved. And I think the same thing is true about software. We have, I think, four decision areas that we need to consult to really understand what a good software decision should look like. And I've listed them here in this diagram for you. One area we want to look at is the organization. Particularly, does the organization have the capacity and the will to do this? Right? I've been at many organizations where we want to roll out inspections or we want to improve estimation, but no one really wants to change the product. The organization itself is too busy fighting other fires to actually pay attention to this. So while there's lip service paid to it, I know if I ignore it long enough, it'll just go away. And the next new thing will come along. And so does the organization actually have the will and the desire to make this happen? What's our evidence that's going to happen? So evidence sources might look for that is, you know, statements of priority, clearing the deck of other initiatives, a strong focus from the leadership, their attention and time. That's the kind of evidence I'll be looking for. Another area of evidence is going to be the best practices. Do we actually have the skills, the tools, methods, and processes to actually do this? It's one thing to say we want to get better at estimation or we want to get better at coding, but are we building in the training, the books, the reviews, creating procedures that actually enable us to do what we're talking about? Or does that all not exist? Right? It's one thing for you to say, wow, we want to do more object-oriented design, but no one actually knows object-oriented in the shop. We may have strong leadership says we're going to make this happen, but without the training and the tools, it's not going to go anywhere. Ground truth says, what is the actual situation on the ground? Is this the right time for and the right seating for this decision? So kind of evidence I'm going to look there is our current status, where we are in the project. Because I might say it's a great idea now to take on some set of new requirements. But if we're just two days from releasing, this is a really stupid time. It might have been a great pro idea four months ago, but now it's not right because the ground truth says we're not, we can't accommodate that. We may have the practices, we may have the organizational will, just the ground truth says it's not ready. And finally, human. 
How will the human beings on the team react to this decision? Because it's one thing to say, we will improve X, and we've got procedures in place and tools in place, and now is the right time. But if every human being who has to do that hates the idea or feels that it's non-value added work, it's not gonna go anywhere. I remember when I was working for the Department of Defense, we would get a new colonel in every couple years, and the colonel would have all sorts of initiatives they wanted to do while they were in the leadership position. But we knew in two years, they would rotate out. And if we just sort of nodded our heads, but did absolutely nothing, we would be fine. In two years, we get a whole set of new initiatives that we could ignore. How often are team members like that on our projects, where they're just not doing the things they don't want to do because they've wait, no, if they wait long enough, it'll just go away, right? So four data sources we need to consider. Organizational, best practice, ground truth, and human. Let's look at an example of a decision that we face constantly on our projects and how it might be affected by looking at the four evidence sources. And that decision is whether or not to take on technical debt.